get by Benning. Darnell Nurse left it in the corner, gets up center. Perry scoops. Corey Perry. Well, you able to shake away from Solani. It's given away to Solani around the front. Score! Tamu Solani with the steal. Three of the fans won one. Score! Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Forever Mighty Post Game Show. It's uh, Pat and Jay on the show tonight, man. Yeah. It's been a minute since we've had to do this together. Yeah. Just gotta, the two of us. This, uh, this show's tanking pretty hard. They're calling in the big guns. I'm going to save it. <laughs> we, had to call, we, tried to, we tried to just manage from 30,000 feet and not get in the weeds. Yeah. But yeah, now we have we're to come down to their going. level. Uh. It's, yeah. <laughs> we had to come and save everything, right? <laughs> Um, so the Ducks lost, and it was almost like it was just a repeat of last Tuesday, minus Josh Manson getting concussed. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, taking a, a nice little uh, bop to the face and uh, not since return. Uh, but yeah, the, this one was kind of interesting with uh, Getzloff uh, not center. He left wing Ryan Getzloff because we just have a plethora of centers at the moment, I, and uh, we didn't even want uh, Henrik to play. Nah, you go ahead and sit down. Apparently, he was close to family member or something that got COVID, but why not? Why not sit Henrique, put Gesloff on the wing, and put Derek Grant? You know, just make him C1, 2, and 3. I mean, Sam uh, four. <laughs> another 4 1 loss. Yeah. Wild, just weird lineup stuff going on tonight. Um, I don't, I can't really tell. Uh, I was at the game on, on, uh, on Saturday against Vegas. And then I, you know, the game on Tuesday was a train wreck, but the Ducks actually really tried hard against Vegas. But Vegas is just outpacing and outclassing everybody. Yeah. Uh, tonight, I just I was like, are they not trying, or are they just really bad? And I think it's probably a mix of both because <laughs> yeah. I didn't really see the effort in there tonight, man. It just didn't look like they cared that much. Yeah, I think uh, maybe a little bit of checking out. Season's done, season's over. Um, you know, other, and, and it's a little bit more difficult. I, I remember uh, reading uh, the article from uh, I think it was um, uh, Eric Stevens, where he was saying that you know these guys can't even leave their home. They can't go out and do anything. They can't even go get groceries. They their families encouraged not to go out either. So for them, the season really didn't amount to much, and they're basically still kind of in lockdown in their homes. So I'm sure, like, for these guys, it's just kind of going through the motion of whatever they're going to do. But, uh, yeah, couple that with uh, injuries, lack of talent, and uh, that's when you get a crapper of a game against the Kings. Of all, it was like, it was <laughs> funny. I was, I was talking to our friends, you know, Kyle and Ryan about it, and yeah. Kyle was like, oh, can't wait because he's a Kings fan. He's like, you guys are just going to smoke us. You guys, the only teams that we can't beat are the, are the only teams the Ducks can really beat this year are like the Kings and the Sharks. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know, man. I hope so because I'm going to the, the last home game next weekend. Sure enough, it's Tuesday, just trash. Saturday against Vegas, not great. And then tonight was just another just, just awful effort by the team. <laughs> But we're at the end of the year, like you said, and yeah. we're fighting for that uh, that illustrious bottom of the barrel. Let's see if uh, we can ranking. get that first overall draft pick. Let's That's see if we can right. get that. That'd be that'd be a first for the franchise. So that'd be great. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, we almost had Sid, but we got Bobby <laughs> instead. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Always relive that nightmare. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so well, we all know, know it's a conspiracy from the NHL. They wanted him to go to Pittsburgh because Pittsburgh was a failing franchise and they resurrected that uh, aren't we always like in between being one of those franchises like we're, we're not always on the edge of failing but i was feel like we're that small market team that could probably use a superstar too yeah. to come back to yeah. anaheim <laughs> yeah <laughs> right in that spot it'd be nice but yeah i'm done holding my breath for that one so <laughs> just just do it do it again rebuild and be somewhat competitive for a little while and i'll just keep falling back and forth it's a really depressing show guys so sorry in <laughs> advance but when you watch a game like we just watched there's no offense there's no defense really uh goaltending was probably another you know decent highlight i would say of the game and uh, it was it was fine um 
and you know just a couple of little miscues but they're, they're kind of tough to pick up anyways and then other than that no run support you can't really do much and then there's just no physicality there's no hitting there's no fighting so it's like what are you guys doing you're just a practice squad at this point it's a lack of effort i'm not really going to put out much of a fight so we're just going to go through the motions until the season's over this sucks well it's not fun to watch there's you hit the nail on the head there, practice squad. You said it when we first got on uh, for our, our you know, our pre-show chat. You're like, this is the practice squad. This is so bad. But uh, there's something I haven't seen in a while. The uh, Killer Seal in chat says, oh, it's the Puck guys. Oh, man. It's been ah, a long yeah. time since we've done that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, Dave also replies in the chat. Says, stayed there. <laughs> it chose the three worst seasons to start a duck centric podcast <laughs> I'll hold that thought because I want to come back to that but okay. Dave says ducks officially second to last and Buffalo's only two points behind with the same number of games played Ottawa with the big win today yeah the big deli never thought you'd be as bad as the Buffalo Sabres and yeah. we are here we are yeah. on the, that's on, pretty on the great cusp, on the cusp of greatness I guess reverse greatness retro night yeah, <laughs> retro uh, greatness. It's uh, as you were saying, the, the the worst three seasons to start a, a Ducks podcast it makes me laugh when you say that because yeah. we were also chatting all, uh, with Eddie before the show started tonight. I was like, this is worse than the year we first started where the Ducks lost like seventeen out of X amount of games. Like it was, that was a bad season. This just feels like it's just non-competitive and also bad. Yeah. I don't mind losing in a bad year but when you can't you can't compete in a game i'm like man why did i spend so much money on tickets for two games to go yeah to <laughs> and one where you can't buy beer because i mean at least you could have that that you know out and like all right well the game sucks let's get hammered even though that's a small fortune at least you had the option to do it now with everything going on you, you can't drink water from there you can only drink it from outside you can't bring it inside it's just like what an experience. So, Dude, the drinking fountains are turned off. Yeah. You can't uh, even get a sip of water from the drinking fountain. It was, it, was, uh, it was like, what? Whatever. Can you go to the bathroom there? Yeah, you can use the restroom. Oh, okay, all right. So I, I had his drink out of the sink. That's what I yeah. did. I just, you know, <laughs> just pee Super in sanitary. <laughs> just pee in the, <laughs> the water fountain. It's like, well, someone's got to use this thing, right? <laughs> so our bet's 970 in chat says, what goes down must go up. That's true. We yeah. just hope that it's a, a quicker bounce back than what it's looking like it's going to be. It, yeah. it just, I feel like it's going to take a little longer than what people are saying. Five-year rebuild, we're in year three, yeah. or are we in year two? What would you say? Pro- I would probably say three because I, I still feel like I mean, we've had last year and this year, and then I think the last year where we had uh, Carlisle that – just wasn't admitted but everyone kind of saw that that was kind of going to happen and then at a lot of so i think that was maybe our first start but i don't even think they were really trying to make it a rebuild so i would I, now i'm thinking about it, probably say it's our second year where you know we're getting higher draft picks it's kind of coming to focus or you're trying to get younger and you know rebuild that uh, prospect pool i think we've kind of focused a little bit more or less two seasons on that I would, I would, I want to say three because then it feels like we're closer to being better. <laughs> but I think we're probably in year two. I would agree with that. Yeah. It feels like three because I think three years ago was pretty awful for sure. Uh, and then like you know Kessler not coming back. Ease, this guy's got horrible injuries. Perry wasn't himself. You know he gets bought out. All this stuff happens. The team kind of gets not blown up. But it did change drastically, but money was still tight. Yeah, was done. Yeah, yeah. A lot of the core that was that was kind of holding the team together and being competitive over the previous seasons is just not here anymore. Yeah. Uh, and that was strange. Ryan Getzloff playing right wing tonight, or yeah, so was he playing right wing or left wing? I Someone in the chat left said wing. left wing. Yeah, I think it's right wing. wing. It's right wing. Okay, whatever. We're wrong. No, so you're right, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> DB Lowry says it was it was right wing. And uh, actually, okay. in our notes, it says right wing. So no, I was left wing. You're both. Right. I don't understand why he was playing wing to begin with. I, I don't. I, it's just like what? Uh, whatever. That was yeah. strange. And yeah. on the fourth line. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't get it. I mean, I guess they're kind of in evaluation mode, but I mean, quite literally, you, you, I mean, you still have you still have Grant as a center, so why not have Getzloff be a center and have Grant go on the wing? I mean, you're not going to get anything else from uh, Getzloff, and like I said, without Henrique there, it's like there's real no proven number one center that you you had there. I think eventually he started moving him back, but 
it was just like yeah, our big answer to all our scoring problems is put gets off on the wing. I just like I said, I, I don't know if they're just trying to put as many people out there to see where everyone kind of fits and how they might work in the future, but it just doesn't seem like they're 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 positioning themselves to win games anyways. And I don't know if that's to try and get uh, the best chance at the top draft pick, but. It's not fun to watch. <laughs> no. <for> sure. <laughs> well, well a, a good note from tonight's game for sure was Jamie Drysdale. Drysdale getting another yeah. goal. I thought, that, I mean, he skated well in the Vegas game. Yeah, they got torched. But yeah, I think he skated well tonight again. Uh, and it's like, it's hard to, it's hard to, to look like you're really good when you're on this bad of a team, even when you're a good player. Yeah. So I'm not really trying to judge him harshly. I know there was some criticism about Drysdale on the media, but. I thought he had a good game tonight, despite that. I mean, he got the low goal, too. Um, and then we saw today, too, that Trevor Zegers is back on the taxi squad. Good. And he's literally lighting up the AHL on a nightly basis and just proving that he shouldn't be there. He should be probably up at the big club. But he had to go back down and learn how to play hockey. So yeah. uh, <laughs> Something he hasn't done, really, his whole his whole career. So we gotta we got to really train him in how to play hockey. Stupid. Yeah. He's playing center, still torching the league down there. Now he's going to get called up. He had six goals and 12 points in nine games since he's yeah. been sent down in that in that stint. Pretty good showing for that kid. And then uh, pretty, sh- I, I would I would be shocked if he wasn't in the lineup on Wednesday against LA again. He should just be here the rest of the season, really. Yeah, he should. And he should have been here the whole time. But they didn't want to waste that one extra year of uh, restricted free agency, that sort of deal, um, on the contract. So it was just really a contract thing that they tried to hide into. Oh, he's doing so well. We're putting him back in the AHL. We'll just do a different position. You know, if it came back to be another one, it's like, ah, you know what? We're going to try him out on defense and let's let's see what uh, what takes off there. If he does well there, then we can really bring him on board for the whole season. It, is know, it, it's, it's, isn't it that just out. like a douche move, right? Didn't you make the player feel like he's like you're, you're you really going to be that frugal? You're, like you're just going to try to hold on another <laughs> year to make sure that he has to develop and they just like the player's only leverage that he has. Uh, is not until he's a, a UFA. Otherwise, he has no leverage. So they're just literally telling him, like, you're stuck with us. <laughs> and we're gonna I, can see, I can see both sides of it, and I don't really like the managerial side of it, and that is, hey, this season's not going to matter, but what is going to matter is the rebuild, and the longer we have that control over his contract and, and where he plays, then let's try and take advantage of that for as long as we can. So I understand that, but it's not really a fun, fair thing for the player. So they're trying to hide it as not so obvious by saying, oh, we're now we were going to try and do it that center and we're going to put him in there. But it's thin, uh, thinly veiled. So, I mean, you can pretty much kind of see through that. Um, Yeah, but yeah, it does suck for the player. And, you know, it just depends what kind of player it is that could rub that player the wrong way. And when it comes down to free agency, they can kind of think about how frugal the team was for the entire time. And go, you know what? That's just not the organization I really want to stick around with. But well, you know, I think hopefully that's uh, not the case for him. <laughs> yeah, I hope not. Yeah, so I can see both sides though. Yeah, uh, DB Lowry says Nas, he would make this team too competitive. Send him and Drys to the AHL and start Miller the rest of the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Ryan Way Miller. center. <laughs> Poor Ryan Miller, man. They should, have, they should have seated up Ryan Miller for a center or left wing or something like that. Give, give the boy a shot. See if he can get his first NHL go crazy. goal. <laughs> like just, just throw it all, throw it all to the fire. Screw yeah. it. Yeah, who cares? You're not going to play him any other way. Yeah, I'm not sure why they're not giving Miller too much more time. I think they're really taking a nice, long, hard look at Stolzar to see if they need to get a backup in the off season. But even in the games he hasn't, he, the stats may not have been there. He's looked solid, so um, I think he's kind of solidified himself. And if if he can keep the Ducks in it like Gibson does, man, by all means, let's let's keep that guy around. So I think he deserved that. He's definitely the backup next year. There's mm-hmm. and there's no way he's getting taken. There's he's not going to to Seattle. I can't imagine with the list of the list of uh, NHL caliber goaltenders that are going to be available to be picked. Yeah, I don't think he would be at the top options. of that list. So not too concerned about that there. Nope, nope. Not when you got Vegas over there sporting Robin Lehner and Flurry. They could take either one of them, I guess. I, I wanted your opinion on something that I, that uh, was in the Athletic today by Eric Stevens. It was um, talking about David Backus, about how he's uh-huh. contemplating retirement at the end of the season. Yeah. You kind of feel for that guy, right? Like, 
he was a good player in his time for sure, yeah. but not with Anaheim. No. And it's just kind of a bummer to see him come to a team and kind of end it on on the last leg of his career on a team that's like going to finish at the bottom of the barrel. It's kind of rough. Yeah, it's rough, but uh, I know he was you know dealing with a little bit of injuries and some inconsistency, and he's kind of one of those guys where the game kind of passed him by, you know, a little bit. So he was he was a great power forward. I remember a lot of games, like St. Louis and the Ducks. You know, he was very comparable to Ryan Getzloff, just not all the way skill wise, but he could score. He would be in front of the net. He'd be pain in the ass to play against. A little bit of a mean side to him. He kind of went over to Boston, and you know he, he kind of brought that. But the game started to change right around that time, and that's when he kind of started to struggle putting up points. He had to be faster, quicker. The grinding game kind of went away, and uh, I think he was dealing with some injuries too that kind of limited mm-hmm. his playing ability. And so you know, it's it was the last contract of his career. You know, it's you know, tough to to really kind of put him on anywhere else but i mean he he gave it a good shot from all counts he worked really hard in the off season worked hard in practice but um yeah it was just it's that time it, it happens at some point you we get told that uh, you can't play hockey well he was always a 50 60 point guy probably in his prime with st louis and he was always a tougher guy like I, he was always getting penalties he'd be in fights he, you know, right, he was yeah. always in scrums he was definitely a leader on every team he played on for sure it's just I just kind of I kind of feel for the guy, man. That's a tough way to go out like that. To go, uh, you know, you you uh, you don't play for St. Louis. They win the cup. That you're in Boston, yeah. and then you yeah. then you end your career in Anaheim uh, on a team that's just not in the middle of a rebuild. That's just a yeah. tough way for him to go. So yeah. I was just kind of like, man, that's kind of a bummer for that dude. Um, send him a care package and tell him how you <clears> feel. So I, I'm I think I'm going to send Bob Murray a care package and tell him how I feel uh, about this. I was pretty pissed when the news came out about Jacob Silverberg. Uh-huh. I don't understand the train of thought in any of this. The fact that he's been suffering a torn labrum, okay, like a major muscle in your hip for years. And I don't know. I don't know if anyone remembers this or not, but like last year we didn't play any hockey. Like COVID. Wipes out most of the season. He had tons of time to recoup and get surgery and all that. I, I don't understand how the team didn't, especially with what we saw with how bad hip injuries are with Ryan Kessler. Like, why would you not take care of this? Why would this be a thing that is not taken care of when there is time where he doesn't have to play hockey? I don't get it. I'm wondering if there was kind of, a, you know, more conversations that we're not privy to that maybe, you know, Silverberg didn't necessarily want to go through surgery or it wasn't bad enough that it was severely affecting his play until it got to about this year. And then we could really kind of see that it just wasn't quite the same because I didn't think it was particularly bad last season. He was still kind of getting up there in goals and points and things like that. So I, I think I think it was kind of good. And then I think that time off, uh, they thought maybe just that time away might be able to heal it a little bit, you know, on his own. And then, you know, like I said, who knows? There's probably something the player did. But I don't feel like it was the management saying, listen, you can't get surgery. We can't have you do that. It's just let us know how it's going. You know, if the surgery happens, then we'll we'll do it. But, um, you know, I, I feel like this is more of a Silverberg not wanting to do surgery Unless it started to really affect him, and he finally got, I think, to the point where he's like, "All right, we can't keep doing this, and I'm at a point right now. If I don't do it now, I'll miss the start of next season. So this is about as far as we can take it." But it it completely makes sense for his his uh, his lack of stats, and uh-huh. it, now it's like, "Oh, this was an issue." Mm-hmm. Well, I guess like I've been I've been harping on this for months now and you know that but Mm -hmm. i don't understand the idea of we're a win now team what this used to what used to be said here this season Mm -hmm. but you're gonna let a guy play with an injury like that like how i just i don't get it you had all they said they said nagging injuries because because everyone's got bumps and bruises yeah do it before the season get get, you know take it's a six month recovery yeah, but this season was different, and the fact they didn't quite know when that season was going to start, A, and then B, like I said, if it wasn't something that it had really affected his on-ice production last season, there was maybe the thought that the extra rest and, you know, he could have a, you know, a shortened season this season where, you know, he doesn't put as much of a strain on it and see if that production stays there. And if it doesn't, then, 
like it did this season, then all right, let's get it done before next season starts, you know, or your recovery is done before next season starts. I get it now. It'll be close, but yeah. I still, I, I still don't understand the thinking behind that, man. I just, yeah, I, I, I just got you know, a lot. We'd have to be there when he's going through it and like ask him, oh, how are you doing? You, you know, you're all right. He goes, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's there, but you know, people I play with sore, you know, muscles and sore, sore joints and things like that. And sometimes you aggravate and it gets worse. Sometimes you just kind of play through it and you end up getting, you know, better. And then once you get some rest in the off season, you kind of solve it. But I think, you know, anytime you try and do surgery, it gets, it gets a little tricky. People can kind of be a little wary that it's going to, you know, they're not going to come out of the surgery the same player that they went in. So yeah, that could definitely be part of the case for sure. I just oh, really it is. felt Me and like talk all the time. I figured you guys did, but yeah. I didn't want to make any assumptions on that. Yeah, it's really uh, Starbucks. <laughs> oh, where I run into Bobby's, where you <laughs> run into Jacob. That's good. Yeah, trade it off now. Uh, and then uh, a little bit more of Ducks news here. The Ducks wanted Sam Steele, or they talked about Sam Steele being a checking matchup center. I, I was kind of, uh, kind of like, what about this? They said that we wanted, they, you know, Eakin said, I want, we want him to play like a real, true checking centerman. That guy, the guy, the guy that just goes out there in the playoffs and just shuts down the other team. Just be concerned about that. <laughs> the other things we're looking for him to improve on are winning puck battles and managing the puck. He's still a very young player. He's learning necessary lessons through the rebuild, and we are quite confident he's going to be able to get the job done. Oh, a couple of things. In fact, he's like, well, we want him to be like that shutdown guy in the play. You, you think we're going to the playoffs anytime soon? I mean, the, <laughs> the dude will be a retirement age. But, um, no, I, I, I don't understand a shutdown center. Um, I mean, being a good center, but like a shutdown center to me is – don't focus on offense. Just make sure the other guy can't do his offense. Uh, I think you can do both by being good offensively. You know, I mean, if they're trying to just maybe take the burden off of maybe the the self expectations that he has, that he should be producing more and that he's not, and that somehow is kind of weighing on him. Um, like he says, he's young, so it's going to take time. You got to get some of that confidence. But, you know, if they're trying to say, hey, let's just – do just uh you know that shutdown center i don't think that role exists nearly like it used to back in the day so it see it harkens back to more like an old school style of thinking of of playing but i just i feel like he could be better suited if if he's putting up offense he's shutting down the other team if you're in the other team zone they're not getting chances on your end so right and he's he's i don't know i think he scored he scored the only goal for the ducks on saturday against vegas but that was a real, a real awkward goal in the crease, mm-hmm. and it might be the only goal he scored this season where he actually hit it in with his own stick. That it didn't bounce off a skate or <laughs> skate an arm or, or an ass or a leg or yeah, something yeah. along the way for him. Uh, he's really been struggling, so yeah. I don't necessarily feel like his career is defined at all. He's he's really young, but I just don't know if I see that sort of shutdown guy. I don't know. Maybe we're wrong. Maybe he's going to be that way. We had a lot of expectation for him coming to this team as being a scorer where he had, uh, I want to say in junior over a hundred points. It yeah. was like a couple, I think one or two seasons he did that. Um, but that's, I don't know. That'd be kind of, kind of crazy for him to be all of a sudden be that guy, but you have to have a lot of other pieces that complement that guy too. You yeah. can't just have that guy. We, I feel like we have a team full of checking centers. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, that's what's one more. This one's just younger, I guess. Um, yeah, that, that's it. I mean, he's he's not a, a game breaker in here like your your Zegers or your Drysdale. Um, so yeah, we've got a lot of those guys. I don't think Troy Terry is a real game breaker. Max Jones really isn't. But if you you get those pieces and you get other pieces around them, they could probably complement each other. And it's finding that combo and and having that take a little bit more time to develop. So I'm still willing to kind of give that. Uh, Sam Steele, more time to kind of move into his role um, and bring it all kind of together. But yeah, anyone that's rushing to try and define where he needs to go or how he needs to play, especially if it's a shutdown center role, I just I think that's misguided. I think we got to try and figure out what he's he's going to be better at, and I think he's got needs a little bit more time to try and find that offensive side. Dave said, "Steal the new Andrew Cogliano just at center, same stone hands." Yeah, <laughs> slower too. Yeah. A little slower. The, I guess that would be good if you're able to work that out with him being that guy. But like you said, I don't. I, just, I don't know. That's a tough one. But interesting thoughts there for uh, for the Ducks to take a look at that. Um, 
I don't want to go on to here next. I don't really want to talk too much more about tonight's game. So I think I want to Good. just get a little prediction out of you here. Oh. So we have – we're going to talk about the Ducks games for sure, just the ones coming up. Okay. So the remaining games in the schedule, I think we have five games left. Uh, sorry. Yeah, I miscounted. One, two, three, yeah, seven. Do you think they win you any use your other of the remaining? Set, huh? Do you think they have do you think, – one, do you think they win any games of the remaining seven? Yeah, I think they'll sneak one out of the Kings probably. Um, especially if Jonathan Quick keeps playing. What about – who else do they play? So they got four – three more against the Kings. That means they got four against two. Yeah, so they have Kings Wednesday in two days. Uh, then they have the Kings Friday and Saturday this weekend. And then yeah. next week they have Monday, Wednesday against St. Louis on the road. And then they wrap up the season with back-to-backs Friday and Saturday against Minnesota and Minnesota. I say they get two wins. I think they can get one out of St. Louis and one out of the Kings. Um, think so? Yeah, because they, they, they don't play St. Louis too terribly bad, um, just like they don't uh, play, play Colorado all that bad. It's just Colorado is really talented, so you have to play it perfect. Uh, but, I mean, we don't, you know, minus the last game against Colorado. But most of the time we play pretty well against Colorado. <laughs> I think we play pretty well against St. Louis, too. And St. Louis has had their own struggles. They're, they're fighting off Arizona to even make the playoffs. But we had them top three, so... Um, you know, they're, they'll struggle. I mean, Minnesota, we might be able to do one because they may start resting uh, guys because they've already clinched a playoff spot. There's a possibility somewhere in there, either St. Louis or Minnesota game, but Minnesota's had our number pretty well this this season. But we haven't played them in a while. I mean, wait till they see us now. We're going to really, really take it to them. <laughs> but, I don't yeah, know. Wait till you see how good we've become. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Remember how bad we were before? Watch this. <laughs> I was going to say they were, they were going to win a few games at the end of the season, especially with, with Z coming back into the lineup. I mean, if he's not in on Wednesday, he's most likely in on Friday and Saturday. I just think, you know, now now with with Silverberg out, Henrique, who knows when he's exactly coming back. Defense is still somewhat decimated. Um, you know, like I said, the, the Kings are the more likely one that we get a win out of it. I mean, this one was a somewhat close game, even though we didn't play well. We were only down 2-1, two empty nets, um, you know, so the score looked a lot worse. But if we can, you know, have someone go out there and do something a little bit different, get a little bit more speed, a little bit more confidence, uh, like Zegris or something, then maybe that can kind of be infectious to the rest of the team. So. Yeah, and that guy's always fun, too. He's always having a good time when he plays hockey, so that'll be fun when he gets back in the lineup. Um, and then if if we were to – so you, you say two wins. I would probably go with that. I I don't see us beating Minnesota either. It's way. hard to say we're going to go three and four the rest of the way Ooh. since we've only got, like, what, two two wins in the last – or three wins in the last 15 games. <laughs> so we're going to get three in the next seven? I don't know, man. I mean, we're not playing San Jose, so – yeah, that's, that's yeah. the only team. If yeah. we haven't won a home game, if they don't, if the Ducks don't win on Friday, so means they didn't game. win a home game uh, in the month of April, because the only and the only three wins they had in the month of April were against the Sharks on the road. <laughs> so there's a great stat. Um, and then I, I have something I want to talk to you about because you haven't chimed in on our uh, in our on our uh, Twitter chat between us for the podcast, and I'm sure people I don't like you guys. Chat are going to get are going to maybe get fired up on this, but. Um, <laughs> Connor McDavid, 81 points, killing it this season. What a hack. I'm sure he didn't do anything special I, tonight. <laughs> yeah, he sure didn't. Yeah. What I was going to say with him is that he has played 45 games, or maybe 46. I think he played tonight, yeah. 81 points. He had a hat trick tonight. So Did he really? Yeah. Oh, I was, I was like, he had three points. He had a hat trick. Okay, yeah, what's yeah, who did he play? Uh, Winnipeg. <laughs> oh, see. That's what I'm getting to here. So... Connor McDavid, hell of a player. Definitely, Jesus. for me, one of the top two players in the league for my money. Easy. Uh, he Definitely the Nathan. best Canadian player. Yeah, I would say he's the best Canadian player. Austin Matthews is right up there with those guys also. Uh, he's mostly number one most of the time when I talk to Canadians about him. Yeah. Um, but do you think his numbers are inflated purely because of this season? I think a little, but I wouldn't say grossly over. I would say that uh, like twenty points. No, uh, I mean this guy was regularly put one points in forty six games. So what? So he's averaging like what one and a half points, and now he's doing closer to two per game. 
ish somewhere in there. So uh, they're slightly inflated, uh, but he's also very good and he's getting better. But yeah, he's also gets to play a lot of uh, game against uh, Ottawa. Calgary's been crap this year. Winnipeg struggled. You got your Montreal time, and then they seem they seem to not do well against Toronto. I was almost going to say, oh, he gets to play against Edmonton. They suck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, he's on that team. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so it's inflated, but, I mean, the guy's really good anyways. I think if he was playing all the other teams, you'd probably see him do more of that. Um, there's probably less travel that he has to do, so that can also be a little bit more of a boost. Just he doesn't have to go and play in Anaheim and L.A. and then San Jose and then go back to Edmonton and then go down to Florida, that sort of deal. I mean, he kind of stays a little bit closer. But everyone's kind of got that advantage. So, Do they, though? Because I th- I, I've been arguing with Eddie, and I don't know where Steven stands on this, or you, that I feel like it's the NHL's beer league. Like, it's a fun it's a fun division to watch because mm-hmm. the, it, the, it's, the, you know, back and forth hockey. Sometimes you get high scores like, you know, and McDavid's torching them. Uh, not, not goalie friendly. No, I, I kind of feel like he's like if I were to say, like I feel like he's a gold player in beer league playing on a silver team. Yeah, but I'd say he'd do that anyways. He he looks like a gold league, a gold level uh, player in this league. I mean, he's he's. But these honestly, teams aren't. Uh, I just have such a hard time. I, I'm, he's playing in the beer division, the beer league division. I, I don't think he would be torching it if he played uh, in any other of one of these divisions at all. Uh, and the he, Pacific's he, not that great. Yeah, I mean, he might have to, you know, obviously he'd have games where he'd have to go against, you know, the Lightning or, um, you know, Florida. But uh, even then, if you kind of look at those teams this season, they're, they're, they're not all that super strong defensively. They're, they're quite offensive as well. So, I mean, it's, they'll trade punches, and it just depends how many times that Connor McJesus is going to score goals or set people up, and he's really good at that, and he's still getting better year in and year out so to see him progress a little bit is not out of the ordinary this one's probably a little bit more but like i said like i said it's probably inflated a little bit but i'm not gonna say it's like oh man if this was the other way he'd be 20 30 points less this point in the season i i would expect him to be halfway because if this was a regular season halfway through the season i would say i would expect him to be at 70 points at this point. Eddie just said, I will concede. He chimed in for us on our Twitch. I will uh-huh. concede that 21 of his points have come against the Ottawa Senators. Okay. <laughs> he's going to play them anyways. But <laughs> yeah, but he's not playing them 9, 10, 15, I don't know how many times they played them. In nine <laughs> like games. Eight or nine, yeah. nine games. Yeah. yeah. I just, oh my God, man. He He is one of the best players for sure. Not saying that, but like there's no way this guy's doing this to everyone else in the league if it's a regular season. And I still think he would I still think he would lead the league and get the R Ross. No doubt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not saying that, but I think like it's I feel like it's like padded by twenty Art, points. Wait, the Art Ross, isn't that for the playoffs? You mean the the heart. Or yeah, the heart. Well yeah, okay. Art Ross is for about the heart. Art Ross is leader in points. Art Ross, I thought was wait, what's the what's the MVP of the playoffs? <laughs> I swear we watch hockey. Uh, yeah. Con Smythe, you jackass. Con Smythe, there we go. All right. <laughs> they should just name it. Playoff Performer Award. That's so bad. <laughs> We're having a Ducks night. That's what yeah. it feels like. <laughs> you literally had me questioning whether I knew that or yeah. not. See, I'm what convinced when I ask questions. Right? Uh, and Dave's <laughs> chiming in. Hey, Dave, relax. Okay, we, It's been a long time since we watched playoff hockey, okay? Yeah. Wow, playoffs. <laughs> So we have a couple of questions that we'll get to here for the night. Um, and I thought this would be funny, too, because Victor asks, is Patrick Waugh someone the Sam Willies may have a conversation with, whether it be for coaching or front office? I'm surprised anyone would would be that interested in Patrick Waugh, if not just for name recognition. Because the way he just bailed on, on uh, Colorado – um, like it was it, it, just before the season ended. He's like, ah, I'm not, I'm not coaching anymore. And just walked. I don't think people, I don't think people remember that. And it was like, what? And they were like, it's like, well, we were going to, we had a thing where we were going <laughs> to, we going to build this team up and go into the, the draft and things like that. And nah, I'm out. It turns out fine. Worked out fine for Colorado, but I don't know. Someone who's just, 
I don't know. He's kind of an angry dude too. It's kind of like a John Tortorella type, but uh, you know, doesn't necessarily have the the pedigree of John Tortorella. So, I mean, you get it for maybe just the name recognition might put people get people optimistic about your team, but you know, he's going to go on a crappy team, you would think, or middle of the way team. I don't think that the Ducks would be all that interested. I don't think he's really a guy that's going to inspire the players to play better or whatever he wants to do. So I still think uh, Aikens probably still gets another crack at it possibly next season. Just uh, I'm not sure about Bobby. And then even if it's not, I would still rather take uh, Gerard Gallant if he's still floating around somehow that dude doesn't have a coaching job. I don't get it, but. Oh, apparently he doesn't sit well with owners or anyone in management because he wants to do his own thing and wants to have control. I don't they don't care. Want he does, does so well. <laughs> he does it so well. So whatever. I would embrace the shit out of Patrick Watt being coach. I think that would be that would be so destructive and chaotic that it'd be it would <laughs> just be so much it fun. It'd be so much fun. Oh my god. You don't remember when he shoved the glass between the benches with Brucey? Yeah, Brucey, exactly. Yeah. Another reason where I'm sure we probably didn't really want to <laughs> want to consider him for the job. It's a loose cannon, man. You can't it's have that. <laughs> wow card. He's Charlie. Okay. It's always well, sunny. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if it really kind of fits our kind of more laid back style. If that's kind of what we have as far as our identity of our players. Like Getzloff's a pretty, pretty laid back guy. You got Zegers out there. He's pretty laid back. Um, and then you bring in this hyped up guy. I don't know. I just... Yeah, all, right, go all ahead. gas, no brakes, baby. Yeah, Just all right. Run this it's red line at sixty right into the wall. All right, max those RPMs. <laughs> Bring in a crazy psychopath for a coach. I think that would be awesome for this team. I think it'd be great. Um, if we're I gonna, expect, if, yeah, it would actually be more entertaining than watching this. Like, if we lost this game, I would like. All right, well, what's the presser going to be like? <laughs> like? At least I'll have that to look forward to later. But uh, yeah, that's about it. But I don't know. I can see that getting old. <laughs> after a while so that's your favorite to replace Dallas Aikens would be Gerard Gallant that would be the guy I would want um you know who knows who comes along or how, how they're gonna do it but I still think that he's he's gotten the raw deal out of the two two teams he's coached um and he's coached them well and for whatever reason they just, they just dropped him so I yeah he's always good whatever team he goes on he's he's done well with them so get him back in here and recently, too. It's not like a long time ago he was gone. So, No, it's true. I just I, – I don't know if they could afford him, right? And I, I, they probably can't afford Patrick Wall either, to be honest with you. It's going to be yeah. a lot of money either way. But I, if I had to pick between the two without being an asshole, I would definitely say I'd rather have Gerard Gallant. I agree with you on that. Yeah. Um, it would just be more fun to have Patrick <laughs> Wall because he's insane. Yep. So Stephen put up a poll that said uh, which player has the highest – annual average value on their upcoming deal which player gets the longest term between lundestrom jones come to on steel oh like what they're going to get yeah like who do you think uh, is going to get the most there okay, or the, so, and the longest lundestrom jones come to on steel who's going to get make the most money on on average per year come to because he's, he's a score He's going to score yeah. goals. Yeah. You'll pay more for that. Lundstrom, I'd probably say second. And then uh, Jones. And then obviously Steele, they're shaping up to be a shutdown center. So you don't really shell out a bunch of money for that. But uh, Do you think that they just get, like threw shade at Steele's games so they can pay him less? Like he's going to be a check. Like they literally titled what he is. I don't know. Yeah, they're like typecasting him as to the role he's going to play moving forward. Uh, yeah, I mean that's the that can be their vision for them. But I, I, I think you know we're kind of backtracking to that a little bit. But I, I think they're maybe trying to just take some of the the expectation off and kind of saying publicly, hey, you know, don't worry about the points. Focus on this part of your game. You're young. You've got time. This is what we envision for you, and we totally have confidence you can do it. Which is kind of a backhanded compliment. Like we totally think you can do this really not impressive role with our club. Try try and be as unimpressive as possible and make the other guy look also unimpressive that you're playing against. I don't know. I kind of <laughs> feel like that they just pigeonholed him into that and now they're like, cool. Now he's labeled as a checking line center. Yeah. So when the when the when the contract time I mean, how much do we really have to pay him? One point two, one point three. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and he's just gonna get looked at like that. So yeah. 
That'll be interesting. Who gets the longest term contract out of those guys? I don't know. I don't think like one's going to get overly more than anybody else. Um, I would probably, I would probably say Lundstrom, just because I think his overall game is good, and he's got a lot of speed, which would translate well over the next few years if he's got more speed than Comtois, who's, who's He's got hands to score, but it's it's real finite. Like I mean, he's he's not blowing past people. He's not making deeks. You know, he's he's scoring goals in and around the net. Quick hands, hard shot, accurate shot. That's good and all, but um, you can run into a streaky goal scorer, and he has been streaky this season. You know, he started off a lot better than he's kind of finishing right now. But Lundstrom kind of can do it all. He can. He's well defensively. He's fast. He's a center. So I think they'd probably want to try and hold on to him, especially since we're not quite sure what the center position is going to look like with the Henrik and Getzloff and how long that's going to go. So they may want to try and lock him in longer term. It would be my guess. Yeah, I would. for me, I would think they'd give come to all the most money for sure. That's an easy one. Uh, I agree with you there. I think as, as far as long-term contract, or who gets not long-term contract, who gets the longest contract, I kind of think I would go with Jones. I think they love... Max Jones because the the way he plays, he's actually not too bad defensively. He does have some speed. He doesn't have the best hands, um, but he definitely is that in your face, stick up for people, and that's people. I don't know. The team seems to like him a lot. Like when the whole when the trade deadline was going around, people would call in on him. They said they wouldn't even wouldn't even pay attention to anyone that's asking about Max Jones. He was like off the table. So part of me feels like he's not going to get the most money for sure, but he's going to get the longer deal. And what does that I'd look be like? fine with that too. Three or four years, max. Yeah, yeah. I'm max. saying him and Lundstrom could probably get the same same type of deal, you know. But I think uh, you know whatever the the max max length is out of whoever gets the longest, then I think Steel they're going to kind of take it maybe a year or two at a time, um, and then. Like I said, uh, Comtois since they'll probably pay him a little bit more, they'll probably still all right. You, you've done well. But it's been two two odd seasons. Let's see where we're at in a couple of years. So you get two and maybe three, and then the other guys might get three or four. Because they, they, those those guys kind of, um, at least Max, he's found what he's good at, and it's something we don't have. So like you know, he he fills that role to a T, and that's great. And if you know you got that, and you can sign it at a lower contract, and you can think he can grow into you know an even better player and you signed him at that lower deal earlier on that's good asset management Ooh, that's that's our favorite term this season i feel like <laughs> right? said it a lot uh-huh well i think that is it for us thank you everybody for tuning in um it was not a fun game to watch tonight but we appreciate those who listen and who show up here on twitch <laughs> we'll have another show on wednesday it'll be ugly sweater night and that's that's because that's uh I don't know, something about Eddie's sweater. I think it was Eddie's sweater or Steven's sweater. It was Steven's sweater. It was Steven's knitted sweater. by his great nana or something. Oh, okay. Yeah, so now probably. I feel bad for saying ugly sweater. Well, no. <laughs> yeah, well, she just took, like, her drapes down and then started knitting it and then just gave it to him. On his <laughs> barber or something. I don't know. She just knitted, knitted for good old Steven's <laughs> birthday. <Steven. laughs> yep. It's a graduation <laughs> gift, maybe. Uh, we're also going to be doing a pox and bruise. It looks like this Sunday afternoon is what we're looking at here. Probably, maybe something for Patreon. We got to do that here at the beginning of the month, end of the season. Will be a fun show that'll be on our Pucks and Brew show on our Patreon. Um, so that'll be a good time. We'll do that. Yeah, Eddie, Eddie drinks seltzers the whole time. You guys are gonna love it. Yeah, he he he's kind of just he's just been that guy. He's just always done White Claw or he's always done Trulies. And I just we try to get him to put vodka in the drinks. He never does it. Like, yeah, he's just, or he pretends to swig it. And makes like ooh. Alcohol. Yeah, I, I think he nice. literally just drinks lemonade, and it's yeah. not even alcohol. Yeah, I think so. I That's think why so. he drinks clear liquor. Clear liquor because yeah. you can't tell if it's water or not. It's yeah, very exactly. true. Like that, yeah, and yeah, he's such a great actor, thespian that he just he can just act his way into oh, alcohol, icky taste. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he, yeah, he makes it seem like it's brew. Yeah, sorry. Oh, D.B. Lowry says there ain't no laws when you're drinking claws. Oh, that's so <laughs> terrible. That's so bad. But uh, that'll be it. That'll be fun. So that'll be our Patreon show this week at Pucks and Brews. We'll put more out on that on Twitter. So stay yeah. tuned for us on there. We'll be back with Eddie and Steven with a show after the Kings game on Wednesday night. And uh, we'll go from there. Hope you guys all have a good one. We'll talk soon. Bye, guys.